Hello, we spoke about everything is energy and everything radiates energy. So everything has a radiation or an aura. And first, it's quite easy to perceive this aura. And second, this aura is based on the principle of the torus and causing this donut. And this torus is again the two spins, the two vortices, spinning, moving, making the energy flow like a donut. And to really you know, imagine this donut, you can cut an apple to half or a pumpkin and you can see this flow. It also means that all energy, when you study a tree, an animal or yours, is moving like this donut and it is meaning it's moving from inside out in this direction or the opposite direction. Also meaning you're always looking at the world through your own aura. Again meaning when you are healthy and happy there is healthy and happy energy outside of you. You're looking through a happy and healthy window to the world. But then when you are down or troubled here, you see trouble around you. And you also project trouble to the world, although the world may not be troubled at all. And then again, you can think, well, maybe you're also attracting trouble. So you see already the first application of this knowledge that an aura is kind of flowing like a donut. It's really showing you that you have to be aware of your own energy and to clean your own window. We saw this donut in the largest hole in the galaxy and also in man. But it, but it told you each aura has the same shape. It's all a core principle. But there is a difference. There are many different kinds of energies. They get subtle and more subtle. Here we are in gross matter. And there are the electromagnetic waves. But the next step where you go more into subtle matter, we call this the ether energy, the life energy we are studying. And the other one, the next one to come, is the astral energy. That's connected more with feelings. Even more subtle is the mental energy with having thoughts, having self-consciousness. And the most subtle energy we're talking now about is the more causal or divine energy connecting you again with the divine energy. And what the ancient people say that incarnation is in fact those energies connecting with grow matter and also having our living systems. Well, it's all the same principle and all about connecting with matter. And the first shape of an aura you can seal in the magnetic field of the field of a magnet. And you can even make this very visualize this when you have iron particles and you really spread them around a, a, a magnet, you can even visualize this magnetic field. And then it comes, you can use your hands, you can sense another layer around this magnet. And this is the ether body of the magnet. So you see the next step, the next subtle level is already connected with the magnet. And this has also been used by the people the mag using magnetism for healing. They're also using magnets. They're using a magnet for healing. And now you can understand that always the next step in the development, so when you go from gross matter, the next step is the ether level, is already connected with it. And you can perceive this in the aura. 
not only in the aura, but you can also perceive it as a sphere above the, the object. So when you perceive a magnet, you can perceive a sphere of ether energy above it and below it. Well, the next step is that this ether energy incarnates, connects with matter. And this is what you see happening in the plant world. Plants, trees, bushes, everywhere. They all have the same energy and they all have the same aura. So you see gross matter in the trunk of the tree, an electromagnetic field around the trunk of the tree, which we call the zero layer. And then we have three layers with the ether body. And the incarnation of the ether body means the tree is literally alive. It has life processes, meaning it can multiply, it can regenerate. And perhaps it can even sense, because the next step when you study the energies would be the connection of the tree and the plant with the astral energy. And it is true when in springtime, when the trees are flowering, blossoming, you can perceive a fourth, fifth and sixth layer outside the tree, outside the canopy that's connected with the astral energy. This astral body is always there, but not so clear as it is in springtime and for a short while in autumn, when the trees are also firing, it looks like they're blossoming again. Above the tree, there is a sphere of astral energy. Well, that's difficult to perceive. You have to climb in the tree, but you can also perceive it above a flowering plant and also above the fruit. Again, it's all the same principle. Above a fruit of a, an apple, or you take a, a pumpkin, you can perceive this astral sphere above it as the next step in the development. And we will show you and do this in an exercise. Then this astral energy incarnates in an animal and also giving the animal, uh, the, the animal feelings. A tree can have feelings and we also learning this now from science, preliminary, but an animal is truly feeling. It has this incarnated astral body and you can also find this in the chakras a tree, an animal has, but also each chakra has its own hormones. So the animal has this growth method, its body, electromagnetic and ether body, meridians like we have in the acupuncture, you can also find them in the animal body, and it has an astral body with chakras. And then it wants to connect with this mental um, energy, wants to have a self-consciousness. And this mental energy, this sphere is just above the head of the animal. In a cow, the horns are connected like a kind of antenna with this mental sphere. Also, you can see it with a deer. It's a fact like the, the, the horns of the deer really carrying this mental energy. So cutting off the horns of a cow, it's really an amputation. The, the cow is not connected really with its higher purpose and higher consciousness, but it's also there. And you can feel, sense that animals are developing to a self-consciousness in the pets and the animals we are domesticating. It's not so clear when you have a herd of wild animals. Now next we finish with men, with us. In fact, we are the most complex creature from energy point of view on this planet because we have all the energies. We have the gross matter, the electromagnetic, you can visualize in the Kirian photography, perhaps you can really take pictures of this. We have the ether body, it's connected with the meridians we use in the acupuncture. We have the astral body with our chakras. We have a mental body, we are self-aware, have self-consciousness. And again, our next step in the development is this causal energy. And this is the sphere above our head. We really can perceive when we do in the five point meditation. It's the sun above your head you are connecting with. And most amazingly, the sun, you can not only visualize, you can also perceive it with your hands. We will do this in other practice in exercise. Really, you can go up with your hands and perceive your higher self above your head. 
And there's not only a higher self, there's also a deeper self below your feet. You can call this the moon under your feet, like the, the shaman did. And this moon under your feet, it's connected with your, with your experiences on former lives, with your contracts and treasures. You are connected with planet Earth. So it's all the same principle. Each aura has this donut shape, also a company or a large ecosystem. And we can perceive this also when we use an aerial photograph or a ground plan. We will do this in another exercise. I think now it's been enough. At first, let's go into practice and send some auras. Thank you for watching.